Well, Kamala Harris has just chosen Minnesota Governor Tim Waltz as her running mate. You've probably never heard of him, neither have I. But he could be the next vice president alongside Kamala Harris as president. Could. So you do need to get to know him, and what you learn should deeply trouble you. In fact, possibly remind you of a certain female prime minister we had for five years. Let's check it out. So this was the announcement of the running mate for Kamala Harris. Hi, this is Tim. It's Kamala Harris. Good morning, Governor. Good morning, Madam Vice President. Listen, I want you to do this with me. Let's let's do this together. Would you be my running mate and let's get this thing on the road? I would be honored, Madam Vice President. Uh, the joy that you're bringing back to the country, the enthusiasm that's out there, uh, it would be a privilege to take this with you across the country. Well, let me tell you, I have just the utmost respect for you. I have really enjoyed our work together. You understand our country. You have dedicated yourself to our country in, in so many different and beautiful ways. And we're going to do this. We're going to win. And we're going to unify our country and remind everyone that we are fighting for the future for everyone. So let's oh, get on. Oh, yeah. Win the fight for everyone. Oh, except the unborn child who is inconvenient. Now, according to the BBC, he has gained, Tim Waltz has gained national attention for his strategy of calling Donald Trump and J.D. Vance weird. Uh, that, that's the BBC noting the really important stuff. Now, uh, apparently this clip isn't weird that I'm going to show you. Count how many times she says good evening and just watch um, his reaction. Good evening. <laughs> good evening, Jenny. <laughs> Everyone, good evening. Good evening. Oh my God. <laughs> it's definitely evening, but Kamala repeated the word weird that uh, Tim Watts had used. And then the corporate leftist media lock stepped into gear, and that's how much they're campaigning for Kamala. He and his running mate are saying, well, it's just plain weird. <laughs> weird. These guys are just weird. That's where they are. Uh, as weird and creepy uh, as J.D. Vance. Super weird idea from J.D. Vance. Yeah, it's not. I mean, it's quite weird. They're just plain weird. Just plain weird. Just plain weird. That stuff is weird. They come across weird and then they start being weird. Yeah, they're weird. Being a really weird. He's such a weirdo. Donald Trump and his weirdo running mate are weird. Deeply and profoundly weird. They are weird. These Republicans. Yeah, and it just keeps going. And you thought the, inter in, uh, the media were uh, uh, independent. Now, the uh, stuff, they were very excited. Why Kamala Harris picked a running mate with serious dad energy. The article said he shows up to press conferences and dad hats and T-shirts like your dad going on a Saturday, going to pick up eggs from the grocery store. But uh, let's check out some of his policies. So according to Life News, the potential vice president signed a bill to allow killing babies and abortions up to birth. Waltz defended abortions up to by calling birth by calling abortion health care. Uh, and but of course, as we know, legitimate health care doesn't kill patients. Waltz said these are people's lives and health care decisions that need to be made by them and their health care provider. He signed into a law the Protect Reproductive Options Act to enshrine in Minnesota state uh, statute a fundamental right to abortion without limits or safeguards. Tim Walls has signed the Protect, uh, Protect Reproductive Options or PRO Act into law today. It establishes reproductive freedom as a fundamental right for every Minnesotan. More than 100 lawmakers joined the governor as he signed that bill. So to Minnesotans, know that your access to reproductive health and your right to make your own health care decisions are preserved and protected. And because of this law, that won't change with the political winds or the makeup of the Supreme Court. This is a bill for Minnesotans today and all future generations. The governor said today, mm. the law allows abortion on demand even late in pregnancy when unborn babies are viable. Uh, and it would also deny parents the right to know if their minor daughter is seeking an abortion.
Now, of course, as we showed you in the blog four days ago, remember that Harris refuses to name any limits on abortion. But it gets worse for Waltz. He also put his signature on allowing infanticide, in other words, letting babies die who survive abortions. Now, in Minnesota, there were five in 2021, but the state no longer protects their lives. Minnesota Democrats took control of the state legislature last year, and they quickly passed a series of radical pro-abortion bills. One repealed a state law that required medical providers to provide medical care for newborns who survive abortions and report the situation to authorities. Uh, now, the Minnesota Department of Health report says that in two in instances, comfort care measures were provided as planned and the infant did not survive. Now, Carol Tobias, president of National Right to Life, said, if elected, a Harris-Waltz administration would push for the most extreme abortion agenda policies of any administration. Kamala Harris and Tim Waltz are both radically pro-abortion and see the lives as precious unborn babies as disposable inconveniences. Waltz signed the repeal of Minnesota's Positive Alternatives Act, which had provided support for pregnant mothers and funding for pregnancy help centres. Yep, no funding for pregnancy help centres. Now, Susan B. Anthony, Pro-Life America President Marjorie Danulf, uh, Danenfeltz has said, with Harrison Waltz's standard bearers, a Democratic Party has become the Shout Your Abortion Party, with no limits for any reason, even in the seventh, eighth or ninth month. Uh, and Daily Wire reports that when Waltz first ran for governor back in 2018, he actually joked about his extreme views on abortion. He said, my record is so pro-choice, Nancy Pelosi asked me if I should tone it down. Uh, he's also very pro-marriage, marrying who you love. Although hopefully that doesn't include relatives or minors. Check it out. 2005, I voted for your right to marry whoever you love, and we won. And my record is so pro-choice, Nancy Pelosi asked me if I should tone it down. I stand with Planned Parenthood, and we won! Ooh, scary. Uh, now, he was in the House of Representatives from 2007 to 2019. He had a 0% pro-life score from the national right to life. And after he voted for a bill in 2018 that would protect babies who survived a botched abortion, he apologised. And he said that he had meant to vote no, and it was a silly mistake. Accidentally voted for HR 4712 today, he said it was an honest mistake. I meant to vote no, as I did on, in, on an, an identical bill last Congress. My apologies for the confusion. I'll keep fighting for women's access to health care. The bill would have required doctors to care for babies who were born alive after a failed abortion. So you're seeing how radical he is. Actually, I didn't realize that um, we showed a clip of Kamala making an unprecedented visit to an abortion clinic in March this year, the first for any president or vice president. And oh, look who's in the background. Yep, that's Tim Waltz, so definitely on side. Now, in terms of transing the children, Tim Waltz signed an executive order declaring Minnesota a sanctuary state for child gender transition. Uh, it's called the Transgender Trafficking Bill that shelters minors who travel across state lines to get trans surgeries without their parents' consent and denies parents custody of their children if they refuse to consent to chemicalization of possible surgeries. In other words, Governor Tim Waltz wants to rip children away from their parents and cut off their healthy body parts. Uh, he says the forces of hatred and bigotry are on the march in states across this country. But let's be clear, in Minnesota that march stops at our borders. When the Trans Refuge Act reaches my desk, I'll be proud to sign it into law. Uh, and he signed an executive order to promote transing the children and to slam other states who were banning it in order to protect, he said, the safety of children. He invited families, including those with a transitioning six-year-old. The six, you'll see in this clip, the six-year-old is asked why she or he is here. 
and as they squirm on the floor, possibly just wanting to play with their toys at home, uh, she answers or he answers trans rights. I mean, who's coaching her to say that? Uh, and in this clip, you'll see Tim Watts is just to the left of the father who is speaking. Standing in that sea of people, a parent, transparent about his family. My partner Gretchen and I are here today because we are parents um, of a trans child. Their child is six years old, and she was six. as excited to be at a boring capital on spring break as any six-year-old kid could be. <laughs> Squirming and fidgeting her way through speeches, hardly aware her existence as why her parents drove five hours today to speak publicly. It's it's a hundred percent personal. I mean, the the safety, the the happiness of of our child is 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 it couldn't be more personal. Asher, why are we here today? Uh, for trans rights. For her rights to be her. As you can see from this uh, interview. Now, Tim Watts then goes on a rant about people forcing an ideology on a vulnerable group of people, pointing the finger, and doesn't realize that the finger is pointing directly back at him. Uh, he wants no age limits for minors. Have a watch. Um, don't deal with other things. Deal with making people's lives miserable on something that won't impact you. That's what these governors are doing. These attorney generals are doing. And, and I've had it I, as a teacher. I will not stand bullies. I never did. And I'm not going to stand bullies who are masquerading as somehow about freedom. This has nothing to do with personal freedoms. It has everything to do with forcing an ideology on a vulnerable <laughs> group of people for short term political gain. It will, won't stand. And in the long runs, Americans are far better than that and and they're going to find that out mm. uh, now tim waltz also signed a bill requiring schools to provide tampons in the boys bathrooms from grade four in the u.s which is equivalent to year five in new zealand so we're talking about tampons in the boys bathrooms for nine and ten year olds yes apparently those boys are menstruating at primary school and need uh products uh, Tim Waltz uh, had children march in an LGBTQ pride parade wearing shirts to form a rainbow and spell out his name. And he's obviously a big fan of Pride Month. There he is. That's his tweet on that. And in fact, even lighting up the uh, governor's residence a little bit like the White House with President Joe Biden. In fact, in one day last year, he signed three radical bills. Transing children, including without parental consent, banning counselling of gender-confused children, conversion therapy they call it, and killing children in the womb. Those basic things we should ask for, to allow people to be able to make their own health care decisions, to be able to be seen and bring their authentic selves to every single room they're in and know that they are seen, heard, valued, and loved in the state of Minnesota. It's not a difficult concept, but what we're making sure is now the force of law stands behind that ability to make sure that everyone is included. We made it. Yeah, no rights for parents, no rights for confused children, and no rights for unborn children. Truly dangerous. Now, uh, probably one of the Waltz's greatest or worst legacies was his response to the Black Lives Matter rioting in his state. Uh, when rioters burned and looted the Minnesota cities of Minneapolis and St. Paul following the death of George Floyd in Minneapolis, uh, Waltz waited days to act, and commentators think he was fearful of alienating his progressive base who were supporting the riots. And of course, Kamala Harris was raising mon money for the rioters to bail them out of uh, prison. And this was the Such outcome. damage and destruction throughout Minneapolis and St. Paul Things have gotten so out of control, it is hard to understand. It's been a chaotic, at times violent day in South Minneapolis, turning into a situation unlike anything we've ever seen in our community. From Chopper 5 up above, we can see the plume of smoke drifting towards downtown Minneapolis. Started vandalizing the building, shattering a window, spray painting squad cars. We are asking the governor, we're asking Mayor Fry, what is the plan here? We saw people throwing rocks at police cars, at the precinct building. This has gotten so out of control, it is definitely not a safe situation for anyone. The tragedy would be if one of these dumpster fires spreads to one of those big apartment buildings or some of these homes, and then you can't get a fire truck down the street. Please, Governor Walls, 
Mayor Fry explained to us what the plan is. We've seen protesters attacking police, defacing buildings, and looting from businesses. The place is complete. Yep, and it resulted in more than $500 million in damages to the state. And Tim Waltz accepted some responsibility. He said, if I, if the issue was the state should have moved faster, yeah, that's on me. But he then expressed sympathy for the anti-police rioters. Uh, he said the very tools that we need to use to get control to make sure that buildings aren't burned and the rule of law collapses are those very institutional tools that have led to that grief and pain, he said. He even said that Black Lives Matter riots were important to push diversity, equity and inclusion, DEI, uh, despite a half a billion dollar loss and loss of life. You can, apparently there's a sense of optimism. A society that does not put equity and inclusion at the center of it is certainly going to uh, eventually uh, come to the places where we're at. Uh, this is a moment of inflection. It's a moment of real change. It's a moment that those folks who are out there demanding this are, are not going to take a, a commission or a report. Um, they're going to want fundamental change. And, and that is what I think, uh, that's one of the exciting things in the midst of all this. You can feel a sense of optimism coming back. Wow. Businesses ruined, lives lost. Unbelievable. Now, according to a Fox News report, in his first term as governor, he oversaw Minnesota's response to COVID-19. And like other Democratic leaders, he favoured heavy-handed pandemic restrictions, including lockdowns and mask mandates. He even set up a COVID snitch line where people could report their neighbours for violating the stay-at-home order. Sound familiar? Now, ironically, at his first appearance with Kamala Harris this week, he accused conservatives of hating freedom. In Minnesota, we respect our neighbors and their personal choices that they make. That's it. That Even if we wouldn't make the same choice for ourselves, there's a golden rule. Mind your own damn business. Oh my gosh, what a hypocrite. Uh, there were complaints over Waltz's pandemic era restrictions and uh, Re Republicans have blamed the governor for lax oversight of pandemic programs that cost millions of taxpayer dollars. No accountability of COVID spending. Hmm, that sounds familiar as well, doesn't it? Now, on the issue of sexualized books, Governor Tim Waltz doesn't like banning books. He wants highly offensive and sexually explicit books like Gender Queer and Lawn Boy in schools. Now, believe me, any adult who promotes these books is, uh, well, you should stay clear of them. And just note the age of the child in this clip. 2024, in response to LGBTQ plus book bans, Wall signed legislation that stops state libraries from removing books based on ideology in Minnesota. There's an effort to demonize and marginalize our transgender and our LGBTQ students people that were at a time when they need to find their identity more than... Yeah, uh, some people call this grooming. In fact, Tim Waltz's state of Minnesota has lurched to the hard left. This is uh, an article from the National Review, and amongst it, apart from the policies I'm telling you about, last year they also, uh, references to women in new laws were replaced with pregnant people. Minnesota declared itself a refuge for transgender sur surgeries and therapies for minors, which I told you about. Gender surgery now publicly funded. Public and charter schools mandated to teach ethnic studies and school boards are instructed to adopt anti-racist curricula and teach the history of genocide of indigenous peoples. Well, this is sounding like New Zealand, isn't it? Uh, driver's licenses and state-funded healthcare are now available for illegal immigrants and private religious colleges are forbidden to require a faith statement from enrolling students. Have a listen to uh, this little statement he made, which caused quite a stir. Apparently socialism, you know, China, Cuba, North Korea, or Marxism, is just like loving your neighbor. Reach out, make the case. And for one thing, don't ever, don't ever shy away from our progressive values. One person's socialism is another person's neighborliness. Oh, great. Thanks for clarifying that. 
Now, on the issue of marijuana, according to drug uh, supporters, they are very excited about Tim Maltz. They say his record has been consistent. He backed numerous cannabis reform measures in Congress, called for an end to prohibition when he was running for governor, and he has signed a legalisation bill into law. He also enacted legislation to broadly decriminalise all drug paraphernalia, allow safe consumption sites, and create a psychedelic task force. And last year, he was very excited. Moment, we are going to sign the legislation um, to make recreational and adult use cannabis available in Minnesota. We will uh, become, I believe, the 23rd state. The 11th other states have uh, homegrown cannabis. But this has been a long journey with a lot of folks involved. Um, what we know right now is prohibition does not work. We've criminalized a lot of folks who are going to start the expungement process on those records. Um, we have a yeah, I mean, wow, he sounds like a great board member for the Drug Foundation. We'll, we'll check in on Minnesota in a year or two to confirm the disaster. Now, as I was preparing this, I thought, hmm, what's his view on euthanasia? Well, I could almost guess. A bill very similar to our assisted suicide law is currently being considered. Uh, and according to this report, Governor Tim Waltz said he's open to discussion on the medically assisted suicide legislation, said his support will depend on how it's drafted. Yeah, right. He said his father's experience with terminal illness had influenced his thinking. Quote, I think this is one thing where I've certainly been open to this idea of death with dignity on how you do it. End quote. Now, uh, just finally on faith, according to a report by Daily Caller, but I note that it's been backed up by most other media outlets, Tim uh, Waltz, who is the governor of Minnesota, identified Pilgrim Lutheran Church in St. Paul as his parish. Now, materials published by Pilgrim Lutheran Church instruct parishioners not to refer to God using male pronouns, push congregants to support reparation funds, encourage them to celebrate Ramadan, and include a modified gender-neutral version of the Lord's Prayer. Uh, Pilgrim Lutheran Church is part of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in America, a mainline Protestant denomination that's been criticised for ordaining transgender and lesbian bishops, as well as for its embrace of LGBT ideology. Uh, the Pilgrim Lutheran Church, Tim Waltz's church in 2015, Approved guidelines for language and worship wherein the congregation asserted that a patriarchal culture gave birth to the writing of scripture and the selection of the canon, and to rectify the purported injustice, the church committed to using gender-neutral language to describe God. Members of the church, for instance, are encouraged to choose non-anthropomorphic language, like hen or baker, to refer to God and urged not to limit these by following them with male or female pronouns. Uh, and the guidelines instruct parishioners to refer to God using titles that signal actions but don't imply gender, like advocate or healer. Waltz's church also uses a modified version of the Lord's Prayer beginning with Our Guardian, Our Mother, Our Father in Heaven. Well, uh, they also take a liberal stance on issues of sexuality and gender, sending its members to march at gay pride parades, working to amplify the voices of women and non-binary gender non-conforming individuals. What is a woman? How do they even know? Uh, they want gender neutral restrooms and celebrate coming out day amongst other initiatives. Whew. Now you know why he can promote killing the unborn child and chemicalizing and castrating gender confused young people. He attends a confused church. And I use that term church only because the building looks like a church. So in summary, he sounds like a disaster, a radical lefty. And he really does remind me of both Kamala Harris and Jacinda Ardern. Now, conservative commentator Ali Beth Stuckey sums it up best with this tweet. She said, Harris's and Waltz's records show us exactly what they stand for. School shutdowns, vaccine and mask mandates, soft on crime policies that support violent riots and repeat criminals, mandating men have access to girls' bathrooms, abortion through all nine months paid for by the taxpayer, stifling free speech, open border policy, 
and economic policy that causes more un uh, inflation. Under them, you'll be poorer, less safe, and less free. But at least they'll make sure doctors can kill full-term babies. Look, pray for America. They sure do need the prayer. Oh, and remember how the corporate media said that Waltz gained national attention for his strategy calling Donald Trump and J.D. Vance weird? Well, just to finish with, here was the perfect response. A little video that came out just after Tim Waltz was picked as Kamala Harris's running mate. What could be weirder than signing a bill into law that requires schools to stock tampons in boys' bathrooms? Or weirder than signing legislation allowing minors to receive sex change operations? Try electing the man who signed those bills, Vice President of the United States. Enter Chief Weirdo Tim Walls. As governor of Minnesota, Wall supported legislation that endangers minors, hurts women, and puts radical ideology ahead of common sense. Now Kamala wants Walls to enforce those laws on a national scale. Tim Walls, too weird, too radical.